Lane. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The subconscious mind records everything that you ever say or do, and it picks up information not only from those things that you're conscious about, but from information that comes in from the periphery of your perceptions. As you look at yourself as an individual, you can say to yourself, yes, I've had a pretty successful life, I'm here, I've done quite well, and now I want to move on. And this tape is particularly directed at going beyond some of those limitations that perhaps lie within your mind that limit you from becoming a total being or expressing as much energy or possibilities as are available to you. The main reason why people sometimes suffer a lack of confidence is basically because they see the world outside of themselves rather than inside of themselves. Let me explain that because the concept to some people is a little obscure. When you go out into a park or into a forest and you look at a tree, what you're looking at is a reflection of light. That light hits the retina of the eye upside down and is converted up the right way through a mechanism in the brain. Even though that tree is in effect outside of you, it's not a part of your body, the only place that you can experience that tree is inside of you. It is subjective. You can only experience that tree in the mind. So when we look at something that is outside of us, we will have the illusion of us and the tree being separate. And as you look at life and you see it separate to you, it begins to take on a feeling that it is you against the world, that circumstances are actually attacking you or debilitating you in some way. And as you develop a philosophy or a mindset that says it's me against them, it's me against life's circumstances, it begins to rattle the strength that you have inside of yourself. It rattles your confidence. The first step in self-confidence is to understand that everything you see, all the interactions and circumstances that you are part of, are in fact a part of the inner you. And that part is unique to you. No two people experience life the same way, experience reality the same way. If we took 50 people out to the park to look at that same tree, they would all see a different tree because there are no two people walking the earth plane that have the same eye. The eye is made up of rods and cones and the structure and quantities and the way that the rods and cones develop in the eye are always different and special to each person. No two people have exactly the same nervous system and no two people have exactly the same contents to their mind. And so everybody will look at that tree and they will say this is a green tree and we will all agree on it being a green tree. But in fact, we are looking at 50 different trees, if there's 50 people. What I'm trying to illustrate by this example is that what you see of the world is clouded by who you are. And a lack of self-confidence is always a matter of you not having quite enough power inside of yourself to control those circumstances that you experience. Once you can understand that you are your world, that everything is you, then you develop a connection between yourself and the outside forces, the outside circumstances of your life. As you take on that mindset or that idea, you can understand then that it is possible for you to begin to control what events you will pull to you and what events you will not pull to you. Things come to you through the laws of attraction. Whatever feelings and thoughts you express pulls to you from life those same events. If your self-confidence is not as strong as it might be, you will be constantly pulling to you people that are intrinsically weak. You'll be constantly pulling to you circumstances that will have a degree of spasticity in them. And so you'll find that events around you and those things you experience have a tendency to not quite work. Problems develop, people don't show up on time, things get lost, deals go down one way or another. And that in itself will accentuate this feeling inside of you that you are not dominant in your own empire, that you are not dominating your own life. 
It will accentuate a feeling of, gosh, I don't really control what's happening to me. And that will accentuate any difficulties that you may experience in developing power, in feeling that you are a strong, evolving and developing female or male. And so what we're looking at is, we're looking at trying to reprogram the mind to establish an automatic confidence or an automatic positive expectancy about everything that you do. The inner mind, the subconscious mind, cannot tell the difference between fantasy and fact. And you can prove this to yourself. If you will pause for a moment and think of a lemon, Imagine yourself eating that lemon. Imagine yourself chewing through the various pieces. As you think of that lemon, your mouth begins to salivate. It does so because your inner mind doesn't know that you're not eating a lemon. Your intellect, your conscious mind, knows that you are just imagining it. But the inner mind cannot tell the difference between fantasy and fact. So when a person lacks self-confidence, what usually has happened in their life is that they've begun to play through their mind a series of horror stories or horror films about what is going on in the world or what is going on in their life. Nervousness or a lack of confidence is always that energy coming forward from the inner mind saying, what if? and what happens and is it safe and will I make it and in fact what it's doing the inner mind is it's just playing you back the film or the tapes that are programmed in there if you are that kind of person that suffers from this sort of negative replay that goes on in the mind you can easily begin to change that and in a way you have already a marvelous quality in your life because it means that you have a very active and fertile imagination. The name of the game is to begin to understand that the horror stories or the fantasies that are inside the mind are not true. They are just fantasies. There is no reason why you cannot live your life in absolute confidence and safety right the way through till the end of your days. It is a fact that very few people ever die a violent death. I think I'm right in saying it's about 1% or less. But when you look at the media and the TV news and you hear about events going on in the world, it is always the violent death or the difficult situations that are featured because you can't run a paper which deals with positivity. I mean, imagine a headline that says, Mr. and Mrs. Smith are living in Melbourne, they've had a lovely day and tonight their kids are coming over for supper. You know, that doesn't make news. And so we have a tendency as humans to believe that all the atrocities that are going on in the world and all the terrible things are in fact reality and commonplace. They are exceptionally rare. Exceptionally rare. And it's the same for your life. If you think about your life, there may have been difficulty, there may have been accidents, there may have been periods of your time when you went through pain or anguish or frustration of some kind or another, but you made it. 99% of your life was fine and you're here and you have every opportunity to clean up that last small part that gives you botheration or causes you to feel that lack of confidence. You cannot go to a person who is not totally confident and say to them, be confident, because the mind won't accept that, because the mind is subjected to all of the programming that's in there. The way for you as an individual to develop self-confidence, to develop a poised, assured attitude to life, is for you to begin to look at your courage, in order for you to develop a stronger self-confidence, you have to have courage. And even if you're not naturally a courageous person, there is inside of you a quantum of that courage energy. And courage is one of those wonderful aspects of human life where if you use the aspect of courage within you, you become more courageous. And so what we're looking at in establishing self-confidence is understanding that as you push up against some limitation, as you move into an area that you're not familiar with, you're going to need a certain amount of courage to push through. And that's just you reprogramming your mind through affirmation, 
through feelings that, hey, even though I'm going into this unknown situation, I can pull it off. I would suggest to you that you don't try to make major leaps. Some people like to operate like that, and they'll take this incredible leap in the dark. They'll throw themselves out of a plane with a parachute having never parachuted, or they'll plunge themselves into having to speak publicly in front of a large audience, and they have that kind of personality. But if your personality is not like that, then what you need to do is set up a program for yourself on a daily basis whereby you will face areas that are uncomfortable for you and you will push a little further than you went before. It has to be comfortable for you. And as you push further and you establish new goals and new ground, so to speak, you're going to have to stop and acknowledge, gosh, that was jolly good, look at that. I went off and I handled that and I did it well. As you push out these boundaries, bit by bit, courage becomes an affirmation in your life. It becomes an affirmation of you knowing that in any one given set of circumstances, whatever they may be, you will have within you the ability to handle things. One of the reasons why people sometimes lack self-confidence is that they are overtly concerned with what other people think of them. You can get up on a stage in front of a whole bunch of people and if you're worried about what people think of you, it'll rattle you, you'll become nervous and you'll stumble and you'll fall and you'll make mistakes and you maybe may make a complete idiot of yourself. However, if you walk up into that stage and you are not involved in what the people think about you, you can pull away from that emotion and you can relax and deliver your speech correctly, amusingly, informatively, whatever it is that you're going to say to these good people that have gathered to listen to you. As human beings and as children, we were programmed to react to the responses of others. In other words, if your teacher at school said something to you, you were programmed to try to keep the teacher happy or to follow instructions, to react to the opinions or to react to the instructions of other people. And that's why that idea of, oh gosh, what will people think of me, is so deeply entrenched in the minds of men. When you can pull out a little bit from that, you're not so involved. And to do that, you have to have a feeling that you are okay as a person. The fact that you're not perfect to me is beautiful because it allows you something to work on. Whatever you are is whatever you are and you're not going to have to make excuses to people and if you get up on stage and you're talking in front of this audience and you make a mistake or you forget your words or if you do something crazy like you fall off the stage, which happened to me once, I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico and interestingly enough I was talking about the collapse of the financial system and with the world economies and the pressure that some of these banking institutions are going under and just as I came to the words the economies of the world are about to collapse I fell off the stage well what I did was rather than feeling incredibly embarrassed and feeling like my gosh I'm a complete idiot I made the falling off the stage a part of the dialogue and everybody laughed like crazy and I actually delivered about four or five minutes of my talk lying on the floor I made it a part of the theater, I wrapped it in there, and it wasn't after I got to the end of my point that I got back up on my feet again and got back up on the podium. I could have collapsed, I could have died of embarrassment, but because I wasn't intimately involved in what those people are thinking, and because I knew that every single person in that audience at some time in their life have tripped or have slipped on a banana skin or have, or have had that same kind of misfortune, what I did was I made that misfortune into a sample of, hey, we're all human and I'm human and I fell off the stage. If you can begin to see that, you're just human and you're only ever going to be dealing with other people that are also just human. And whatever weaknesses you have inside you, whatever uncertainties, they will have as well. And in fact, they're not going to think you're an idiot. What they're going to see is they're going to see that you're going through the same kind of things that they go through. And that will cause them to have compassion to you. So as you look at self-confidence and you look at courage, you understand that the way to build courage is to begin to familiarize yourself with the world around you. If you have delivered a thousand speeches in a thousand halls someplace, for you to do the thousand and first speech is simple. If you have to go and deliver a speech 
and it's the very first time you've done it, because you're not familiar with what's going to be happening to you, it will rattle your confidence. If you want to become a confident, powerful, assured being, you have got to begin to work on expanding who you are and doing your homework, so to speak. Let us say you're a salesman and you've been assigned a new territory. Rather than just driving into the territory and going and seeing the first customer at 9 a.m. Monday morning, what I would do is I would arrive in the territory on Sunday and I would drive to the area that I was supposed to cover and I would familiarize myself with the area. Where's the bus stop? Where's the station? What are the shops? What does a place look like that I have to go to? You may want to peek in the window. What does the furniture look like? What is this situation around here? And as you familiarize yourself with the situation, then when you walk back into it, you do not arrive with that energy of newcomer. You already have an understanding of what you're doing. Familiarity is the way to develop self-confidence. And sometimes we can't be bothered. We would rather sit in a corner nervous than to begin to break down that nervousness. Any time that you have performed a function or some series of actions in your life successfully, it allows you a tape in your mind that has that information. And so if you went and you made a sales call on Monday morning in this new territory and the sales call was positive and the people liked your presentation and whether they bought or didn't buy is irrelevant just as long as it was a positive and warm interchange between yourself and those other people that you went to see, you would take a moment to replay that tape in your mind. You replay getting out of the car, walking in the store, what was said, how did you open your notes, or how did you present your product or your samples, what worked, what didn't, when you spilt the coffee, why was that, next time perhaps you're going to be sure that the coffee is not so near the edge of the table, or that as you're waving your arms around demonstrating this incredible thing that you're trying to sell them, you make sure that the coffee is out of reach and, and away to one side perhaps, and as you replay that tape in your mind, it sets up a feeling of strength, because again, the mind doesn't know that it's fantasy and so the mind thinks that you're actually in that shop making that sale.